Believe it or not, but much of the modern medicine we know and use today was built on a fragile foundation of trial and error. Throughout history, many doctors would often invent their own procedures and surgeries that they truly believed would save lives. However, when looking back at some of these downright barbaric practices, we can honestly say to ourselves, what on earth were they thinking? But hindsight is 2020. Let's just be thankful that they're not practiced anymore. These are the 10 banned medical practices that will make you lose your faith in modern medical science. Number 10 is tongue removal. What is the best way to cure a stutter? Doctors in the 18th and 19th century believed that the cause of the stutter was from the tongue having minor spasms whenever a person spoke. So the solution was simple, just cut out half the tongue of the stutterer, called hemiglossectomy. Doctors would use a knife to selectively slice off small sections of the tongue until they rendered the tongue basically useless. In most cases, the stutterer will no longer be able to speak or use their tongue anymore. However barbaric the surgery was, nowadays the surgery is only used to help patients suffering from rare cases of oral cancers. People today who suffer from a stuttering problem are often prescribed a much more pain-free solution, speech therapy. Number 9 is Lobotomy in the 1950s, Dr. Walter Freeman unveiled his newest breakthrough medical procedure called the transorbital lobotomy, which is the process of hitting an ice pick up the nose with a mallet until you reach the brain in order to purposely destroy brain tissue. A lobotomy is a very risky surgery that would often kill the patients receiving them. Even those who survived the lobotomy were often rendered virtually brain dead from the gruesome procedure. Needless to say, this procedure was widely criticized and many respected doctors spoke out against it, but the practice still wasn't bad until 40 years later, despite incessant criticism from the medical community. Number 8 is Rescure. Pioneered by Dr. Silas Ware Mitchell during the late 19th century, this controversial treatment operated on the belief that if a woman became hysterical, she wouldn't calm down unless she was forced to rest. Resting in these terms meant no moving, no reading, and no talking. Instead, they were forcibly restrained until their mood improved, much like meditation, except it was against their will. After a few hours, the doctors would check up on the patient to see if they had calmed down or not. If not, they would be left alone for a few more hours. Oftentimes, doctors would request that the person returned for multiple sessions. And as a cherry on top of this unethical nightmare, the majority of the patients who were forced to undergo this treatment were almost all women. As you can imagine, many women striving for empowerment were rightfully taken aback by the notion that they are somehow incapable of controlling themselves. Nowadays, if someone gets worked up, we just like to tell them, sleep on it. This seems to produce the same results. Number seven is doctors as assassins. Doctors are banned by the Hippocratic Oath from poisoning any of their patients, which seems odd, because doctors are supposed to help their patients and not kill them. Well, in Roman times, doctors were known to be expert poisoners for hire. High-ranking officials were known to frequently bribe doctors to help kill their political rivals. In fact, it was considered crucial for a person of high standing to have a doctor on their payroll. Romans hated doctors so much that in order to protect the doctors and to make sure the city's civilians got proper health care, it had to become a law that doctors could not poison their patients. Number 6 is Radioactive Water before anyone knew how bad radium was for your health, it was put into bottles and marketed on TV as a fountain of youth. While now it is used as a form of cancer treatment, back then it was commonly believed that radium had healing properties and would give recipients an energy boost. This was so widely believed that it was even put into toothpaste and other goods. That was up until Herman Joseph Meller discovered the effects of radiation poisoning. Then, almost overnight, all products containing radium were taken off the shelves. Number 5 is Spinning Chairs In the 1800s through the 1900s, doctors struggled to keep mentally ill patients still. Most of the time, multiple doctors and nurses would have to physically hold people down. So in an effort to stop the practice of restraining the mentally ill, one doctor came up with a brilliant plan to strap patients to a chair and spin the chair around until they lost consciousness. The practice lasted nearly 100 years before someone finally decided that this was torture and deprived a human of their basic rights. Number four is electroshock therapy. Primarily used to treat severe depression and homosexuality, electroshock therapy is the very definition of torture. The doctors would forcibly strap patients down to a chair, attach electric rods to a person's temple, and shock him or her until they felt better. The doctor, of course, would decide when the patient felt better. Shockings could last anywhere from 15 minutes to two hours, 
and many people had multiple sessions, plenty of which were against the person's will, such as Ernest Hemingway, Carrie Fisher, and Paolo Colo. However, after being banned in the medical world, electroshock therapy is still used by the CIA as a form of torture. Number 3 is Trepanation have a headache, migraine, or just need to relieve some pressure? Well, today we have little pills to help relieve the pain. Before we had the pills though, we had trepanation, which is the process of drilling into a person's skull to relieve the pressure. The belief was that your body would somehow overproduce blood and it would all pull in your head and cause the brain to be suffocated. So they would relieve the pressure by drilling escape holes. This is one of the oldest known medical practices, dating all the way back to prehistoric times. Even though it was commonly used to help people with migraines and headaches, there were some cultures that used it for cosmetic purposes. They viewed the holes as improvements to the human form, similar in the way we view earrings or tattoos. Luckily, that fad came to an end, and we came to our senses and developed aspirin. Number 2 is Cocaine after we stopped using trepanation and before we invented aspirin, we had another way of dealing with headaches. In fact, this medical marvel can cure just about anything. Depression, toothaches, upset stomachs, menstrual cramps, the whole works. There's only one downside. It's extremely addictive. What is this drug called? The ultimate painkiller, cocaine. It was so common in the 19th century that doctors would prescribe cocaine to cure a variety of mundane ailments. The practice continued in a very widespread fashion until the negative effects of prolonged use of cocaine were discovered. After this, using cocaine as a medical treatment became illegal. And number one is heroin. On the topic of illegal drugs being used for medicine, heroin first got its start in the late 19th century when it was used as cough medicine. It started out innocently enough. The people who invented it were looking for a cure for the common cold and stumbled upon heroin. Thinking they had discovered a superior cough suppressing medicine, heroin was rushed onto the shelves. It was only later that they discovered the mind crushing addictiveness heroin possesses. Doesn't this tale sound awfully familiar to cocaine's? Oddly enough, the tale came full circle since the people who invented heroin later went on to invent aspirin. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out our other lists, and we'll see you all next time.